Hello, this is Silvia Mazzoni, and I'm going to give you just a very quick run through on how to use EasyEase. EasyEase is a graphical and scripting user interface for OpenSeas. It does not include OpenSeas itself. You need to first download OpenSeas from openseas.berkeley.edu. Once you have the program for OpenSeas, you can go ahead and start up EasyEase. So the first thing we need to do is to tell the program where the OpenSeas executable is. This is something you do once and then the program creates a small little file that it's going to tell it what the path is so that you don't have to redefine it every time. But if you do move the program easies without moving that little library file with you, it's going to ask you again, but you just keep it in one place. And I, for example, just have a shortcut to the program. So we need to tell it where OpenSeas executable is. I just happen to have it in my desktop or you can go deep into the libraries of OpenSeas. I'm going to say, there it is, openseas.exe and click open. Now a little window pops up. This window is the program's way of communicating with you. Anytime it runs analysis, it gives you the output of the analyses or pretty much the summarize output from the analyses here. And if you have errors and warnings, they pop up here. What I do is I don't close it. I just move it over to my other monitor. So let's get started. So we want to start a new file because we haven't done anything yet. I'm going to call it new file. That's a good name as any. I've already done it before, but that's okay. I want to replace it. Sure. Or you can just define a new name. So this very first walkthrough is going to show you how to do the simplest elastic analysis using EZs in two or three dimensions. The way it manages two and three dimensions is you define two dimensional elevations, a grid, and then you assign the elevations to the grid to build your 3D model. So this is pretty much made for regular structures. So let's build a new elevation. So we go, we're here under elevations, grids, and 3D frame. I'm gonna do a new elevation. I'm gonna have pinned boundary conditions. There's a bunch of options here. I would just kind of leave them all out because there are different things that I played with. Actually, there is one thing that I wanna do is, this is more than a single degree of freedom system. So I'm gonna have two modes that I'm interested in. It's going to have two stories and two bays. Up here, I'm under elastic models here. I've just defined values for E and I as minus 999. If you want, you can put in 29,000. And then for IZ, I'm not going to go to units right now, is 2 times E to the sixth. I don't know what value that is. And I'm just doing default beam column elements. And um, this value in the IY is going to be the same as the value in IZ. So I'm really interested in only defining beams and columns. So I'm going to turn off the diagonal braces and the chevron braces that would pop up if I define beams. This is the stiffness for my beams. So I'm going to turn off my columns. You see, I actually have the option to define a beam at the ground level, but I'm actually going to just define it for these beams. If you want, you could press the shift key and a bracket and so it adds anything within that window. So these are my beams. Now I'm going to look at my columns and I call these ghost data, the data itself. If you want, you can turn off the beams, but that's just weird. Um, but maybe it could get really busy. So my columns are actually going to be a little bit more stiff. So I'm going to go three times 10 to the sixth, and then I'm going to shift here and this column as well as this column. And I can change properties now, and I want to do this column too. But hey, I want to change my bays here. So this base, yeah, I have entered a little edit box. So this is going to actually be 180 inches. And this I'm going to keep at 120. And maybe this one, I'm going to make it shorter. Okay, 60, I pull out, it gets accepted. Hey, that's a little too narrow for me. So let's make it 160. All right, we've defined our frame. Pretty easy, huh? Now. What I'm going to do is I am going to skip these other elements because I'm done with those. I'm going to go to gravity loads and there's different ways you can define loads here. You can define gravity loads and then you can define nodal masses and nodal loads. As you know, OpenSeas manages forces and masses separately. You have to define both. So I've given you the option to define each of them individually or you can go to gravity loads. What gravity loads does is you're defining either a distributed downward load or a lumped downward load here. And what the program is going to do is it's going to take this force 
and convert it into both a force applied at the nodes or elements, as well as a masses at the nodes. So it's gonna give the contributory mass from each element or the whole mass at this node. So when you're doing gravity loads, you're defining both masses and forces simultaneously. Now, this distributed load is actually a load per unit area. And if you look at the very top, I have a tributary width of one. So I'm, I like to define it like that so this actually becomes per length. If you wanna change your tributary width, then this becomes per area. So I keep a one there and I've got 10 here. So I'm gonna define gravity load of 10, 10, 10, and 10. Actually, I want this to be five. And this one's gonna be five as well. And let's just put an additional weight right here. I'm all done with my gravity loads and my frame, so I'm going to save. Now, as soon as I click this save, what Easy's does is it actually saves, doesn't save your original file, so it saves it to a file that's called new file underscore current data. So every time you make any save modifications to the components, they get written into this temporary file. The original file is still empty. And so this is interesting because now you actually look behind the scripting language that I've developed for EZs. And it has defined a gravity load combination already automatically for you and you will see. And these are the different components of what makes up the model for my elevation. As you can see, it's all written out real nice. So what I typically do is I start off with something in the, in the graphic UL user interface and then I go in and edit this file and play with it. And, really build a big model this way. But I'm gonna minimize this file for now. You know what, I'm actually gonna go ahead and save the work that I've done until this point. And so now the new file .tickle is actually gonna have the input. I'm uh, pretty much done at this point. I've defined my elevation, so I'm gonna go and analyze it. So I'm gonna go analysis. That's the name I can select. There's only one, so it got selected. And the load combination is just gonna be a gravity load analysis. So I'm gonna say, okay, analyze. Clicks, runs open seas, and it ran it. Gravity analysis is so quick, you can barely see it. And so we're gonna have the results. Here's your results of our gravity analysis. You can actually view the deformations if you want, but there's no deformations. Oh, my diagram is a little small. There it is. I can make my bed name on my diagram a little bigger. If you right mouse on one of these, it prints all the values, and then you can click them on individual ones if you wanna turn them off or you can toggle that back off and just, I only want the values in my beams. And actually, if you want, you can just say, hey, I only wanna look at my beams and then show me the values. Or vice versa, just look at the columns and it gives you the values for the columns. Hey, I'm happy. Now let's go to 3D analysis. I'm going to go back to my input and I need to define a grid. So I'm gonna define a grid before my elevation had two bays. So I'm gonna define a two by two grid. I'm gonna save it. And then I'm gonna go on. Are you sure you wanna save it uh, or exit without saving? So this is a little issue that you have to deal with in the model. And you say, uh, yes, because I just saved that object anyways. So I'm gonna do a new 3D frame. And this 3D frame is gonna have rigid diaphragms on all the floors. So I'm going to select my grid. There's the grid. I'm gonna select my elevation. I only have one elevation, so I only have one option. So here's my elevation. Remember, the widths of this grid are actually what controls the widths of the bay. So even though I define these as different values, I didn't change the widths of the space. So if I want, I can actually go in and edit. So forget this, I haven't done anything. Uh, I'm gonna go into my grid that I've defined and I'm gonna say, wait a minute, I want this to be 180, okay? And this one, I want it to be 100. There it is, so now I don't have a symmetric geometry anywhere. And you know what? I mean, even save it as something else. So now I'm gonna go into my 3D model. Yes, I'm sure I wanna exit because I know I just saved it. I'm gonna say, 3D frame, now the grid that I'm gonna pick is this one, this is the oblong one. And I'm gonna define the structure. 
by taking this elevation and putting it at the different column lines. Wherever it is that you select, it's gonna go left to right. So this point right here is always gonna be the point that I pick. So it's gonna be left to right. If I pick A, then it's gonna go actually, this column line in one is actually gonna be right here. So I'm gonna put that here. And here you can see the little arrows as to direction in which the elevation is going. And then I'm gonna put it here and here. Now I've built my 3D frame. I'm gonna save it. And I'm actually gonna do an analysis here. I'm gonna take this frame and I'm gonna subject it to the gravity load again. And I'm gonna say, okay, analyze here. And there it is, it actually ran the analysis. It's so fast, it's really hard to see it. So what are the results of the analysis? Here's the bending moment diagram. I don't wanna see all the values. And here's what the bending moment diagram looks for your frame. You can zoom in and out. You can move it up and down and you can even rotate. I need to improve my graphics, but I think this is good enough to start with. So then what you can do is you can select an element and I say, hey, I wanna look at the axial force. Well, there's not enough data for this case. So maybe I'm gonna look at this and I wanna look at the moment curvature as a function of time. Uh, there was not enough axial load in that beam to really give you data. So now you can see with time, it's gravity, so it's really hard to see it. Uh, you can actually visualize what's happening at the nodes. If you want, you can plot displacement. Again, gravity analysis deformations aren't really of significant value. So maybe we should do something else. Let's do a pushover analysis. So I'm gonna do the input and I'm gonna do, go do a load combination. I'm gonna define a new load combination and I'm gonna put for the gravity loads, I'm gonna call this load combination pushover. And I don't have to do anything there. So for my gravity, it's gonna have gravity load. And then for my transient, which is the time dependent analysis, I'm gonna just do a default pushover analysis. And I want it to go to not one inch, but I want it to go to 10 inches. I'm happy with this and I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna save my input file. And now I'm gonna do the analysis. First, I'm gonna do a pushover on this 2D frame. So I'm gonna say analyze here. And now you can visualize your frame as it deforms. And you can see the open seas window in back that's communicating with you and telling you what the periods are. It's running the transient analysis and you can see the structure is deforming. And you can actually, this is just generated by open seas. It's at six, seven, we're almost at 10. There it is. If you want, you can actually even just display the mode shapes of the structure under that gravity load or under the gravity load that belongs to that load combination. And these are the first three modes. And the periods, some periods are responded here. This gives you the number of periods that we had selected when defined our elevation. And these are one through three is what I've asked for. So these are the first three modes. I click on the open seas window and press enter. Okay, it's done run the analysis. It's processing data. Sometimes processing can take longer than, and here's the results for my pushover. So I'm gonna click on this point, which is the maximum point in my pushover. And if you want, you can actually watch the bending moment diagram as it increases. So you can click on this, you can view the values, or you can actually watch bending moment diagram as a function of time in these elements. And I wanna show you actually what the input file looks like is these are just basic components that it defines, um, but it's really neat to look at the language because it's pretty straightforward what the load combinations are. Here's a static load and here's your transform load with different, so you can actually go in now, maybe change this from 10 to five. But you know, it's just a good example of the elevation, how you can define the geometry, the columns, the beams, and gravity loads on the beams. You define a grid label, different types of grid, and how you put together this 3D frame. You define what the grid is, and then what these different elevations are. As you can see, you can have default orientations, or if you orient them differently, you have to tell it where those column lines intersect. I also wanted to show you that the program does generate an input file for OpenSeas. So if you go to the data file, you'll see it under the file name, you can see that this is actually generated by EZs, but these are the OpenSeas command. 
So they're pretty straightforward and if you want you can always take this and modify but remember you can't really go back. I still haven't developed something that reads your OpenSea's input file. But it's really helpful. It's a great way to get started if you're going to do a basic regular frame and then you add on to it. This is actually a very good place to start and there's actually lots of really useful scripts on uh, running the analyses and displays. So I hope this is helpful. That's it. Thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.